This is the Northern California ranch of Canadian and international star, Mr. Neil Young. I was on tour with Neil earlier in the year. Neil's a good friend of mine. Hi, I'm Dan Clear. Uh, we're inside Neil's house here. We just popped by with the Canadian film crew to see if we couldn't uh, maybe talk to Neil and uh, get him to give us a little tour here around his ranch. I think you'll find it quite interesting. Uh, it's mm. pretty... Oh, here he comes now. Hi, Neil. Dan Clear! Ah, how are how you? How are you doing? Boy, I haven't yeah. seen you since the tour. I know. Nice to see you again. Neil, uh, I thought I'd come by this morning, and uh, it's not too early for you, is it? No, I don't think so. You brought a crew with you yeah. today, Dan. Do Great. you think we could take a look around the ranch? Well, sure. Dan, I just had a baby girl the other day. Amber wow. Jean. How'd you like a cigar? Well, thanks. All right. Congratulations, I'll Neil. go get uh, dressed up, and uh, here, finish my coffee. Oh, terrific. Okay, thanks. Dan. Well, Neil Young, and uh, looks like we're going to get to go out and uh, take a look at his ranch. Well, this is the barn here. We're going to harvest this barn, Dan. Yep. Come back to the old cover. Like to see these horses here? Yeah. Melody. That's JT over there. Hey, like hey, 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 hey. Oh. Uh, Everybody's told us that the Toronto Yorkville scene was uh, a pretty wild scene. Neil, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, yeah, that was uh, that was back in uh, I don't know what year it was, but I got there. I was about 18, I guess, and I never seen anything like that. All the flower children and everything wandering around. And I think I had my first encounter with hashish and marijuana and stuff like that down there in, in Yorkville and uh, kind of changed my life, you know, the music scene and everything. And uh, I got a few gigs and I eventually joined a band called the Minor Birds with Ricky James and Bruce Palmer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, that band broke up. Ricky got uh, busted for draft evasion when we were at Motown. We signed with Motown and then uh, the band broke up there, and the manager uh, got the advance from our Motown money and spent it all on drugs and OD. And, uh, so that's a pretty solid start. What were they at that time? Uh, coffee houses or like regular rock and roll nightclubs? Well, those were coffee houses back then. Uh, they were like little folk clubs, you know? Mm -hmm. And we used to, uh, first of all, we'd be back in the dressing room and the John Craig Eaton, who uh, was one of the Eatons of Canada, Eaton family, used to be our sponsor and he would buy our equipment for us. And then in exchange for that, we would let him come in the dressing room and, uh, and give us a pep talk, sort of like the coach, you know, before we went out. And then we'd tell him we were going out to the stage and actually we'd go out back and pop some Amy's and then we'd go out on the stage and come out laughing and really vibrating, you know. People like this a lot. Well, you were obviously a success in Yorkville. How come you came here to the United States? Well, I knew that I was uh, destined for a little more than the Yorkville scene. And uh, I, I, I just felt this, this drawing down to Los Angeles. I had to go down to uh, California because I knew that the music that I was interested in was, was coming from there. There's no way that the music scene in Toronto at that time could support the kind of ideas that I had. The audience just wasn't big enough. So uh, I left Canada at that point. Well, Neil, I can see why you think it's so beautiful up here. I tell you, I sure do. Man, what a nice day, huh? You know, you spun off from another group to go with Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. How did that all come about? Well, uh, after Buffalo Springfield uh, broke up, I started making a few records on my own, and uh, Stills got together with Nash and Crosby, and they needed somebody to make their road show a little more interesting or a little more wide or something. Mm -hmm. So they got me, and uh, that's when I joined them. Do you think that the youth of today are looking for political leadership? No. I don't think so. I don't think kids today are looking for political anything right now. Do you think that young people today are as naive as they were in the 60s? I think there are young people then 
were maybe uh, just as uh, just as naive as the young people today, and and maybe a little more idealistic. But I'm, I I I don't really think they're more idealistic. It's just that back then was a different group of young people in a different time. Being young is the same no matter what year it is. Stay tuned for Neil Young on Rock Etc. After your albums, Neil, seem to change with the times. Why is that? Well, I don't know. That's a question that my uh, a lot of my uh, record companies have asked me over the years because it's car it's hard for them to uh, to market someone who changes from one audience to another. I just try to keep on going and making music about what I'm thinking about. Even, and and uh, I like it when it changes because uh, it's less boring, you know. That's, that's probably why I'm still doing it. Well, Sex Pistols and Johnny Rock, you know, were just a, another group I liked. And even though the violence was unnerving to me, the fact that I was unnerved by a group was a good thing. It was a real shot in the arm for rock and roll. It made the uh, made the uh, sleep loop been just sort of repeating themselves over and over again. Uh, it just kind of moved them on into the next dimension and uh, put something fresh in there. And uh, you know that happened to uh, to me and to some of my friends in some ways. What was your interest in becoming a filmmaker and uh, maybe taking a chance of failure? Well, it's actually, I think it's all the same thing. Pictures and the music all go together, and uh, there's no way that you can draw a line between one thing and another, because they're all, uh, it's all one thing. Now it's music videos, and uh, everything, uh, people are beginning to accept the fact that you don't have to be a filmmaker or a musician. You can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. He has 15 solo albums to his credit, three films, and many other creative works. It's my pleasure tonight to present the 1982 Juno Hall of Fame Award to singer, songwriter, musician, filmmaker, and visual artist, Neil Young. Quite a bit of my roots are from Canada. A lot of the musicians that I first listened to, obviously, were Canadians. And uh, I learned that I was a free person in Canada. I sang the national anthem every morning, and I, and I remember it. And uh, since I grew up in Canada, well, I learned that uh, I was a free person. I could do whatever I wanted to do. It gave me a good foothold. So I decided to go for being uh, an international artist. Thank you. Merci. I'm greatly honored to receive this award tonight. And uh, I'd like to say hello to my family who is spread across this room and also across this country and some other countries in the world. I have just one feeling tonight. I'm proud to be a Canadian. Thank you very much. Elvis Presley, Jim Morrison, a whole long list of artists have self-destructed. How come you've lasted so long, Neil? Why aren't you dead yet? Stumps me, Dan. Dan, you're putting me on the spot here. This is my place. I'm going to have to ask you to leave if you don't just lighten up on me. <laughs> I'm telling you. You've changed since the tour, Dan. Well, I'll keep my questions a little straighter. Stay tuned for Neil Young on Rock Etc. Just a few bricks shy of a load, Dan. Oh. Look, this is my car collection. All us rockers have got car collections, you know, when you get all that money. <laughs> Son of a gun, an old Packard, huh? Yeah, Packard, Jeepster here. 55 Imperial back there, old, another old Packard. We well, you know cars seem to be a recurring theme in your work. 
Well, I love cars, man. I love them. I always have, ever since my first one. My first car, I remember, was a Buick Roadmaster Hearst. And uh, I guess I never had that much money when I was a kid. And I always wanted these cars, and I never could afford to get them. And now that I'm rich and uh, successful, I have bought these beautiful cars. Well, there was a story that I heard that you had bought a hearse, which was what uh, you and uh, some other uh, musicians had come to California in. That's right, a 53 Pontiac hearse. And uh, we drove right down here from Toronto <laughs> to Los Angeles in it. Well, Neil, these cars are pretty trashed out. <laughs> Trashed out? What do you mean, trashed out? Want to take a ride? Oh, Look at my collection, man. Yeah, well, I'd like to take a ride. Do they run? Which one, man? Which one do you want to go in? How about this one? What is it? 51 Willis Jeep, sir. Let's go. Jump in. Let's move this stuff over here. No problem. Pretty clean when you get right up to it. Yeah. How's it? Good from far, but far from good. This is the control room in the studio, Dan. This is where we mix our records and where uh, the actual recording takes place. You did trans in this in this room, right? That's right. I've done a lot of my albums in this room, and uh, we've had a look. Well, I've been working in here for about twelve. There's a story that you only record full moon. What is that all about? I like to record in full moon, but if something's happening when it isn't full, I'll, I'll go for it. Full moon's a good time. Well, Neil, you know, a lot of people have grown up with your music. You know, we look up to you as a, as well, a poet philosopher. <laughs> What's the process that, that you use to, to write your songs here? Well, I use, uh, <laughs> Any number of ways I can do it with a guitar or my synthesizer. Just whenever the mood strikes me is when I write a song. Well, this board was turned on all day long. I, I noticed that, in fact, it's warm now. This board is actually on. What's, what is this? Well, it's on in case I have an idea, Dan. It's just ready to go and grab it just like that, you know? Engineers will come over and we'll just start up. So you're ready to record That's right, right. Here, huh? Well, Neil, thanks a lot. I'd, we're going to take a look here in just a couple of minutes at, uh, at the uh, show. Great. Well, thanks, Dan. As you know, I had a baby girl just the other yeah. day, and my wife is down at the hospital, and I'm going to go get my son at the house, and we're going to get in the car and go down and, and see her. So uh, it's been nice seeing you today. And here, you take this and start up the machine. I've already seen it. I'm going to see my new baby. All right, Neil. All thanks right. a lot. Bye, we'll Dan. We'll see you later. Enjoy the day. Okay. You enjoy it, too. Well... Mr. Neil Young, we had a wonderful day up here at his ranch. I hope you enjoyed the interviews that we did with him and hope that you got an insight into uh, one of Canada's favorite sons. So I'd like to share with you now the show that we did last year that was taped in Dayton, Ohio. So, well, here goes. I'm anxious myself. <laughs>